Okay, what's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're gonna to talk about the Razer Core V2. This thing is one badass piece of technology. For those of you who don't know what the Razer Core V2 is, let me go ahead and do a quick intro. This allows you to take a GTX 1080 Ti and hook it into a laptop, even as small as an Ultrabook that has a Thunderbolt 3 port. And then that in turn will allow you to play high-end games. It also functions as a hub of sorts. It has four USBs and a LAN port on the back, as well as whatever display outputs your graphics card has. Now, this thing's not gonna be able to fit every GPU out there. I have a 1080 Ti Founders Edition in it. The V2 is a little bit bigger, allows you to put a slightly larger card in it, that's nice. The big difference between the Razer Core and the Razer Core V2 is that the V2 adds a second Thunderbolt 3 controller so that the GPU and the USB ports have their own dedicated PCIe Express lanes which means that the USB ports should function properly and not limit the GPU bandwidth like the Core V1. The original Razer Core ran into lots of bottleneck issues, preventing you from using the USB outputs and preventing you from using the full graphical capability of your external card on your internal monitor. So unless you had an external monitor, it was hard to get good performance out of your external GPU. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these benchmarks. I've got a whole Excel spreadsheet of them with, filled with graphs. So let's take a look at the 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra scores first. The 1080 Ti inside the desktop with the desktop processor did perform quite a bit better at about 12 or 13% higher at 6812. Uh, the 1080 Ti Founders Edition is a lower clocked uh, 1080 Ti, so I would expect a slightly lower performance anyway. That said, the 1080 Ti inside the Razer Core V2 performed pretty well, getting a score of 5922 when hooked to an external display or 5819 when using the internal display. That right there is a huge indicator that Razer has figured out how to basically get the same performance using the internal laptop display and an external display. And that's pretty freaking huge for people that want to use their internal displays. And you can see there is a massive, massive improvement over the internal 1060 GTX, which only clocked in at 2596. Now you have to keep in mind, these are just raw benchmarks. These are like the maximum possible potential for improvement. And uh, when you get down to real world benchmarks, it's quite a bit different. Okay, so let's take a look at the Witcher 3. This is a 1440p monitor. And uh, the desktop had 95 frames per second. The Core V2 on an external monitor had 52 and the 1060 GTX internally only had 35. So you're getting an extra 17 frames per second using the Core V2, but it's nowhere near the same performance as a full desktop setup. And I believe that's because The Witcher 3 also really leverages that processing power of the CPU. At the same time, it still likes a really powerful graphics card. So now let's take a look at the player unknown battlegrounds benchmarks. Now I always sit on the same rock pointing at the exact same point uh, for the city test and the rural test. Uh, just to keep things as fair as possible. And I also wait for all parachutes to land. In PUBG, whenever you're looking at a city, it really becomes CPU bottlenecked. But when you're out in the middle of the woods, like on the hill, and you only have a couple houses in your view, it becomes very bottlenecked by the graphics processor. So PUBG is another example of where you can really see the difference when you use a high-end processor versus a laptop processor. And it's also true that memory speed can also influence your performance in PUBG as well. When you're looking at the city, the desktop got 74 frames per second, the Core V2 got 52, and the internal laptop GPU got only 43. There's a bigger improvement when you look at the rural benchmark, however. The desktop got 142 frames per second, the Core V2 got 105, and the 1060 only got 59. That means that when you're out in the middle of nowhere running around in the hills, you're gonna have much, much better performance using the Core V2 than with just the internal, and that 105 frames per second is plenty good enough 
to actually get good, solid, competitive gameplay, whereas the, the internal graphics card just really isn't there. Lastly, let's take a look at Overwatch. We're gonna looking at two benchmarks in Overwatch, one at 1440p resolution, one at 1080p. The 1440p resolution is all settings maxed out as max as possible. The desktop managed to get 120 frames per second, the Core V2 95, and the internal GTX 1060 only 65. So this is another example of where you're getting massive jumps between the laptop, the core, and the desktop. Even with a lower end processor, you can get well over 120 frames per second. So until you reach those ballparks, you're never gonna really be limited by the CPU unless it's a super low end CPU. But when we dial back Overwatch to 1080p and reduce the settings to only high, it becomes CPU bottlenecked. The desktop has that higher end processor that's overclocked, bringing in a total of 237 frames per second. But the GTX 1060 and the Core V2 provide almost identical performance. Again, this is because it's CPU bottlenecked. I'm not gonna go over every benchmark I did because it would just become really exhaustive, but you can go ahead and download this or look at it on Google Docs. What it comes down to is when a game is CPU bound, the Core V2 really doesn't help because the laptop processor really can't push out enough frames to match the graphics capabilities that the 1080 Ti provides. But when you have a game that's very GPU dependent and not really limited by the CPU, the Core V2 really shines like in The Witcher and like out in the rural areas of PUBG or in Overwatch at very high settings. Do I recommend the Core V2? Absolutely, if you're gonna play very GPU-centric games, it's tricky to get set up, but once you have it set up, it works wonderfully. I really enjoyed it. If I didn't have a high-end desktop, I would totally use this all the time. The Razer Core V2 with the 1080 Ti provides about 20 to 30% more graphics power on average across all the games, but with certain games, you're gonna get massive like 50 or 60% performance buffs, and other ones, you're gonna get almost nothing. It just depends on how you set up your settings and what resolution you're gonna play at. If you're gonna play at 4K, you're gonna notice a much bigger improvement. Overall, I'm really impressed with the Razer Core V2. I highly recommend it if you've got money to spare. If you don't, if you wanna go for the most power for the budget, then definitely a custom built desktop is gonna be far better. That said, I'm looking forward to when the new i7 8700HQ processors come out, then maybe the CPU bottlenecking will lift up a bit and we're gonna get a lot closer to that desktop performance using that Razer Core V2. Maybe there'll only be a 10 or 20% gap. Maybe then you don't even need a custom built desktop because then you're getting 90% of the way there using just a laptop and an external enclosure. Who knows, I'm looking forward to bringing you guys more reviews. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Hit that notification bell and give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Brandon out.